Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show here on 88.3 The Saint. I'm your host this week, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017. And I have some very special guests with me today, some, some friends that I've known for a long time. Cecilia Guido, class of 2017, one of my best friends and classmates who I had spelt her name wrong for nine years. And preparing for this show today, this episode, I realized that her name was spelled with an I and not an E. So I've got to fix all my contacts that I have with Cease. Uh, and she is now also joined today by Sal Buddy Guido, class of 1972. And it's a, it's, a, it's a daughter and a dad show today. We're talking about legacy family, the Siena connection, and we're so happy to have both of you guys on with us this afternoon. Hello, thank you for having us. Yes, thanks, Brandon. It's uh, good talking to you again. And I've said this for the entire week as we've been planning this episode with you two. You know, I, I'm so excited about this episode because it's about a legacy family and, and a really great family indeed. And not just because we share that connection to the 315 uh, and the roots that we have in central New York, but just like my family, the Guider has a strong rooted connection to Siena. And we're going to dive into that today a little bit uh, about your path at Siena some of your favorite Siena memories and life since Siena. But I kind of want to take back the types. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here next to the class in 1972 yearbook and I'm looking through Buddy Guido's photos and all of the memories that he had. Uh, for the audience today, can you, Buddy, share a little bit about what it was like coming here in 1968 as a freshman, what campus looked like, what you remembered about freshman year, and maybe how you decided to come to Siena. Okay, well, uh, first of all, I uh, actually got a leg up on my fellow classmates because I was at Siena two weeks earlier to report to football camp. And we actually had a football team back then and uh, we were undefeated that year. So um, I felt like I uh, actually had a little bit of a comfort zone already um, for those two weeks. And then when my uh, classmates came, I felt like I was, uh, I already knew some of the ins and outs of the, uh, of the campus. And you also had a few of the ins and outs too, because we were talking briefly about the legacy family. You had a brother that went here to Siena too, before you came to Siena. Did you ever come and visit him did he ever come back and share all these great Siena stories with you? Well, I did my senior year in high school. He was a senior at Siena. And this is Bob Guido. And uh, he, he had me come down for a weekend. And uh, I was going to, actually, I was accepted at Union College. And I was going to go to Union. I was going to play football at Union. As it turns out, he was playing football at for Siena, which was a kind of a fledgling program at the time. And um, I visited the campus and I uh, actually felt more comfortable there than I did. Uh, nothing against Union, but um, I just, I liked the atmosphere. And I, I decided, well, you know what? I, uh, like a lot of people at, the, at that time, I really didn't know exactly what I wanted to be, but, um, I, I like the idea of going towards the liberal arts kind of uh, education along with, I was an accounting major. And um, they always told me that was a good foundation for pre-law. So I took all the law courses and subsequently I didn't go to law school, but um, that's how it worked out for me. <laughs> and, and buddy, you talked about it you know, briefly that you didn't know what you wanted to do exactly when you came into college. I was the same exact way. I wanted to wear a suit and tie because I loved wearing suits and ties in high school. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna come in as an undeclared business major and, and see where that path takes me. Um, but I quickly realized that that path wasn't for me and I decided to be a psych major. Um, and you were talking about all of these different classes that you took. And I was looking through the class of 1972 yearbook and all of those photos are in black and white. And I was looking in the 2017 yearbook, all those photos are in color and there's a lot of growth and a lot of enhancement, enhancements to the campus. 
for the younger audience listening to us today, can you talk a little bit about where you lived when you were on campus, some of the campus life experiences that you had, was the library, you know, where it is today, just a little bit of a perspective of what campus looked like uh, back in the 1960s and the 1970s. Okay, well, back then, you would have turned off of Route 9 onto Spring Street, and as you, I lived in Ryan Hall, and as you made a left to go to the Ryan Hall parking lot, on your right, was the IM football field, which is now a dorm. Uh, it, it's changed quite a bit in that respect, I would say. There's a lot more buildings on campus now. Our uh, football practice field is now where the, um, the Alumni Recreational Center is. Uh, things to, the trees obviously have grown quite a bit in 50 years. I can tell you <laughs> that. And, uh, I'm not familiar with the name of the building now. It used to be Gibbons Hall, and that's where we used to play basketball. And yep. um, there was also a rat skeller underneath. So Which I'm time, all about bringing back. You know, I'm, I'm going to keep pushing that. At the that. time, if you were 18, you could drink legally. And so uh, you really, you had a rat skeller right on campus, which was very convenient. <laughs> and there weren't too many DWIs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what, what was uh, Gibbons Hall? What did Gibbons Hall? It was the one that would have been just west of Roger Bacon. So it's now Foy Hall, where we have the Creative okay. Arts Building, the Center for Career and Internship Center. And there's a lot of employees at Siena that always remind me about the Rat Scaler and how great that is. But <laughs> we don't have that nowadays. And it wasn't here when Cease and I were on campus. And a lot has also changed in the past five years. But for you, Cease, you know, I think it's what the fall of 2013. We had met each other, I think, on social media before a high school recognition for athletes. And <laughs> we were like, I... we're going to Siena. <laughs> Brandon, uh, Brandon and his brother, they were the uh, talk of the West Berlin <laughs> athletic department. So we had we met at this scholar athlete banquet and I saw their names. Do you remember? Yeah, they were oh, yeah, there? Yes. The <laughs> yes, I was there. And he was there and I'm sure Pam and Pete were there. And uh, yeah, we went through, I went through the pamphlet and I was like, oh my gosh, these guys are going to Siena. And I did, we never got the chance to meet, but I did meet you in the cafeteria in Saga when uh, you guys were just walking around with a Saranac bear and asking everybody to sign. <laughs> and I said, that's a good way. And that's, that's right. from Unica, I get it. We understand it. I remember we were walking, yeah, walking in the dining hall and, and you were with Kevin DeRutter and you were like, oh, hey, just come eat with us. And I had said, oh, I've already been saga sitting for two hours, but, you know, I'll come and say hi real quick. And then we became lifelong friends. Uh, right. But, you know, every now and then I was like, I want to get out of the dining hall. And luckily I had my brother, Ryan, who was a senior at the time, and he kind of spoiled Andy and I a little bit. He had the car on campus. The freshman <laughs> couldn't have the car on campus. So he was like, oh, let me take you to a Latham Diner. Let me take you to Five Guys and, and get some and get some off-campus food. And that was my legacy connection. And we talked about Buddy and Bob Guido. But for you, Cease, there's also another legacy connection with your cousin, Paige, who was also a senior when my brother was a senior and you and I were freshmen. What do you remember about sharing that time, that one year together with Paige? Oh my gosh, I absolutely loved it. It was, first of all, she had a car on campus, which was obviously wonderful. And, uh, you know, it was great. She showed me around. I always knew I had like someone to fall back on if I ever needed just to hang out with anyone or, or do anything or, you know, it was nice to see Paige around. And I also had two of my really close friends from home that went there the same year. So Corbin was a junior and yes, Adrian yes. was uh, a sophomore when I came in. So we had friends from Mohawk in every grade. That's right. So, I mean, it was great. And of course, obviously I didn't have a choice. We had, we had Buddy there. We had Bob there. I had Paige there. I couldn't say no to Sienna. Couldn't say no to Sienna. No. It was. <laughs> Family we, talk, we talk a lot about this, this legacy connection that we all have as the Guidos, as the Murphys here at Sienna. And I, I, I don't know how I didn't know this until yesterday when I was doing some investigation into the into the Guido family, but it just shows you how humble the Guido family is that Buddy's wife, Rita, also went to Siena and they have their own unique Siena sweetheart story as well, which I now need to include in the Valentine's Day collage. 
But this legacy family wouldn't have happened if you two didn't meet and, and connect. Buddy, can you share a little bit about your Sienna sweetheart story with Rita and how she ended up at Sienna? Well, actually, um, she was taking courses at Hudson Valley at the time, which would have been in 1984. And Hudson Valley had an exchange program with Sienna. And she ended up taking a few courses at night. And um, she figured she worked it out so that she actually got a degree from Sienna. And uh, nobody there really knew her. <laughs> but <laughs> And uh, of course, this was uh, quite a while after I went there. This would have been. But you guys had met. You guys had met before she went to Sienna, right? Yes, we met in 1980. But um, so uh, she did get her degree in accounting, as I did and my brother Bob did. So. And I, we only got one minute left until we got to cut to a commercial break. But we talk about all the improvements that we've had over the years. And, and one of the strong traditions is, is family weekend. You know, in, in, a, in about 30 to 60 seconds, can you both just talk about what it was like experiencing family weekend together for you, buddy, as a parent, being proud that your daughter Cease was here at Siena, seeing what was new around campus? Just brief thoughts on, on that for both of you. Well, I got to tell you, it was, <laughs> it, after all that time, it was a little overwhelming to see the changes. I mean, it, it, almost like I, I got disoriented a little bit. <laughs> but you were trying to point to the landmarks. Like it was very much like and this is I, where I, we played. I felt like I was the uh, tour guide saying, back then, this was there, this was here, this was there. The library actually was uh, pretty much um, where what's the center where the mailboxes were and all that? Sarah's oh. the Student Union. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was the library. And um, for every student that came, it was a tradition that Father Cyril, Cyril met him or her. Well, it was actually, it was just him. Uh, it was just all boys when I went in 68. So, the, uh, but as far as the family weekend, it, it was really good. It was, it, it was a very positive feeling. It always was at Siena. Um, there was always a positive Mm -hmm. spirit about the place that it, it, it gave you a really nice comfort zone and it and it, it just it, I flashed back to that feeling when I got there like yes you know this this was a very comfortable place to be and that's a lot about what reunion weekend is and and bringing back the the classes for reunion weekend and experiencing that feeling again and you know we're tied to radio time so I got to cut to a brief commercial break but we're going to come back. We're going to keep the guiders with us, talk about life since Siena, some of their favorite Siena memories, and what they're looking forward to to celebrate Reunion Weekend. Stay here with us on 88.3 The Saint. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show on 88.3 The Saint. I'm your host, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017. I still have the Guido family with us today. We have Cecilia Guido, Cease, class of 2017, and her dad, Sal Guido, Buddy Guido, class of 1972. We're talking everything Siena related, some of their favorite Siena memories, what they remember most about coming to Siena. And we're gonna pivot a little bit in this segment to life since Siena. And what's gonna happen when they come back to celebrate their five-year reunion and their 50th reunion. But we cut briefly too quickly in the last segment about what is most memorable with the changes at Siena. And that's why I wanna go back to you, Buddy and just have a little bit more perspective for the audience today about your time at Siena and some of those changes that you experienced as a student here on campus. Okay, well, I'll, I will say, um, go, being a student in the 60s, it, it actually was a time of change um, socially. And uh, obviously one of the big changes at Siena was going co-ed. So when I went there, it was all guys. The next year, girls started coming. So that was a real big change. And um, it, it just was a big time, big change in society at the time. The Vietnam War was going on. Um, so it, it was kind of, and I know Siena has changed over the years, but I, I would say 
that four year period was probably as volatile a change as uh, it had ever experienced, going from uh, all male to co ed, um, not having mandatory ROTC, um, not having to wear a suit to, uh, to class. I would love that. All that yeah, all that. Um, it, it was quite a change. And so and those four years were, uh, were, were a big change for Sienna, I would say, in the long run. And, and, and in my eyes, when I, when I think about change and I think about growth uh, as somebody in their 18 to 22, you know, it sticks with you. And I'm sure, you know, when you were experiencing this change, buddy, that there were probably some, some lessons and some, some values that are rooted in you as a student that you've taken with you since Siena, uh, the Franciscan value that we all have as saints. Can you reflect on a little bit about some of those values that you've taken with you throughout your life um, that you try to live by day to day? Well, I think the biggest uh, thing that I come back off of that with is that uh, the, it's it's important to stay positive, and and I and that is the uh, the overall spirit that I got there was that uh, you're human, you're going to make mistakes, mm -hmm. but we're here to support you. We're here to make this a comfortable experience, and um, uh, the values that you learned, you, you kind of instinctively knew this was the right thing to do, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it made it pretty easy to, to carry over in life. And we talk about, you know, taking all of these values with us. And for Cease and I, one of those key slogans that we remember is the education for a lifetime. And we try to take what we learn as young adults and take, us, take it with us through life. But for Cease, it's literally the education for a lifetime. Uh, as you went into the teaching profession uh, after your time as a saint, can you reflect a little bit and share with the audience today some of those lessons that you learned as a saint and what made you passionate about teaching and, and helping others in the education field? Yeah, um, like going off of what my dad said, I, I do think just the overwhelming positivity and just like understanding that people are human um, and that learning is important. Like I and I want to make a shout out to the to the math and CS department because <laughs> Really, I mean, that's that's really where like the academic for me took place. And I just thought it was like it was just so rewarding. It just to show people that like, you know, le learning doesn't have to be boring. Like it could be fun. You can apply it to any parts of your life, really, like any personal parts, you know, any any uh, personal problems you're having, any anything that's going on, really. I thought that was I just think that's cool that, you know, like you're not just teaching people two plus two, you know, you're just, you're, you're able to have fun with people and connect with people and show them how this is used. So I think that was, that was definitely something important that was instilled, that, that was easy to carry over. And you gave a, a, a brief shout out, you know, to the math, math team here at Siena. I was never the best at math, but everybody speaks so highly of the math department uh, and the lessons that that department teaches its students. Uh, but anything outside of math that you were involved in as a saint, any of some of your favorite Sienna memories, was it Sienna Fest, was it a Mr. Sienna competition, living oh in the gosh. townhouses, just a few <laughs> things that still stand out to you uh, that you miss about being a saint. Brandon, it's everything. It's, <laughs> every, it's everything. I just, we had so much fun. I can't even explain how, like, I can't even explain how much fun we had. Um, I mean, we did, we did the club soccer and I had never played soccer and neither did Kat, one of my best friends that played. So we just had no clue what we were doing, but we played and we had a great time. That was fun. Um, there was, you know, like intramural basketball, uh, just, yeah, Sienna Fest, Mr. Sienna. Like we just had so much fun just getting into whatever we could and, and just hanging out. Like, I just remember hanging out and just laughing about really anything. Like, you, like, I just, I think it's important. Like, I think it's important for kids to know going there, like just take advantage of it. Cause you're, you're not going to be able to be with a bunch of people your own age, just being able to do whatever, laugh about whatever you want. Like it really was a good time. And they always talk about it being, you know, the time of your life, the greatest memories made, you build that bond. 
for people listening, you know, Cease and I still have this great bond. One, you know, because she's actually <laughs> teaching at my hometown high school in Westmoreland. Right I don't mean to interrupt you, but I do want to say I can attest to you wearing suits in high school because there are <laughs> photos plastered <laughs> all around of you and your brother in suits. And I'm like, there they are, man. There they are. Michael J. Fox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've only been mentioned that a few times. <laughs> But we talk about, you know, we talk about this bond and, you know, Cece and I have this, this fantastic bond. Yes, because we grew up in Utica and we've stayed connected, but we built that bond here at Siena over the time as a saint. And that's really what some of Reunion Weekend is about. And Siena College hasn't had Reunion Weekend in over, you know, two and a half years. It's, it's coming up on three years that we've had an in-person reunion. And we want to bring people back and reminisce about their time as a saint see what is new on campus. Uh, reunion weekend for those listening, it's June 3rd through the 5th. It's Friday to Sunday. It's jam packed with events and opportunities to see what's new on campus and to reconnect with old friends. You know, Cease is celebrating her five year reunion, but for Buddy, you know, it's your 50th reunion. And I'm sure that there's a lot of people you maybe want to see that you want to reconnect with. Can you reflect a little bit on, on what it's like coming back to Siena to celebrate that 50th reunion? Well, you're right, Brandon. There's, there's quite a few people that I haven't seen in 50 years. There's a core of friends that have kept in contact with, but there's also people that went their separate ways. And back then there was no Facebook or anything like that. So we didn't really connect. Uh, and we didn't keep in touch, but um, I'm really interested and curious to see how their lives ended up. And um, it's funny because you look in the rearview mirror and there's so many different four year segments when you're out for 50 years, it's 12 or 13 four year segments. But those four years there made such an indelible impression on your overall memory compared to, in my case, say the years from 2012 to 2016. Those four years definitely stand out. And I hope if anybody from my class is listening, <laughs> I, I hope that they decide to go to the reunion because I will be there and I, I'm really curious to see how their lives made out. And we talk about that 50th reunion and it's one of the, the, the special moments that we have that we can, for those that are celebrating their 50th that are listening to this podcast today, is we do have that 50th dinner and we bring back the class of 1972 and you guys get to reignite that friendship and that bond at a special dinner just dedicated to you guys and, and really celebrate everything that your class has accomplished over the last 50 years. But I know 2017 has also accomplished a lot just in five years. And I'm already balding on top. It feels like I might be celebrating my 50th, but it's only <laughs> gonna be the fifth. And, and for you, Cease, you're coming back just for your five-year reunion. What are you most excited about to see? Who you can't wait to see on campus? You know, we're gonna hang out on Casey's, have a welcome back party, but it's only been five years. I mean, it feels like it's been a lifetime that you've probably been at Siena. Yeah, it really does. I, I'm looking forward to, I don't even know everything, just all the people that are going to be there that we used to go to school with. I'm looking forward to seeing our friends and like just just the people that you you love to see, but you don't really keep in touch with that much. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be really fun to see them and just see what's going on and just just feel like you're back there having having the good memories again, just being around all the spots on campus. And again, you know, I'm, I'm tied to radio today. We've only got about a minute left. And I kind of want to conclude this show today, kind of how we concluded that first segment about experiencing family weekend together. Uh, and this whole podcast episode today came about, you know, I was sending a letter to Buddy for the 50th reunion. And I was like, oh, wait a second. This is the five-year reunion. What's it going to be like to come back together as a family to celebrate those two milestones? Buddy, I'll let you go first. Well, you know, I, I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be very interesting. And um, I, I got to meet some of Cease's friends, too. And um, I'm kind of curious as to uh, how, <laughs> how they're doing in that five-year period. But uh, 
I, I don't want to scare them and tell them how fast time will go by. Uh, th they'll just have to experience it themselves. But 50 years is a half a century and <laughs> this doesn't seem like it, but it's cliche-ish, but time does fly by. <laughs> and Cece, you know, this podcast flew by, time flies by, you know, we've got 30 seconds left. Last thoughts to you about coming back with your dad for the five-year reunion. So excited. I want him, I want him to meet my other friends. I want to meet his friends. I want his <laughs> friends to meet my friends. I want us to all hang out. I can't wait. And I want to get tons of pictures. I can't, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see both of you in person for the reunion. For those listening, twos and sevens, or anybody that wants to come back and experience the all alumni events on June 3rd through the 5th, registration is actually open right now today at sienna.edu slash reunion. All the details and information that you have, you can go to that landing page, email alumni at sienna.edu with any questions. And we can't wait to bring back all the saints and celebrate reunion weekend. To Buddy and to Cease, thanks so much for joining us today. You know, I know it's the weekend, but you guys took some time out of your day to speak with the Sienna community. Thanks so much. And to everybody listening, we'll be back with you in two weeks on the Saints and Alumni Show right here on 88.3 The Saint. Have a great weekend, everyone. Okay, thank you. Bye, Brandon. thanks, Brandon.